Hey, folks, it is uh, our special, special <laughs> guest and special honor to welcome Linda Cooley. Hi, Linda. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Tell us about who you are, what you do. We'll start mm-hmm. there. Um, I'm Linda Cooley. I am a mom, a Iraq tribal member, and I'm the CEO of Mad River Brewery. Nice. How long have you been CEO? For going on four years. It's getting close. Four getting years. close. Three and a half. Somewhere in there. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you make beer. Yeah, it's so exciting. Well, you do what you have the the tasting room and mm-hmm. the restaurant and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. So yeah. tell us about Linda. How did you were you born and raised here in Humboldt? Um, I was born in Sacramento and we moved um, back here to our reservation when I was very young. Uh, we came and went my whole life. My dad retired. Finally, he owned a pile driving business. And so mm-hmm. we were able to retire to the reservation. Mm-hmm. Um, he wanted to hunt and fish for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. reservation? Uh, the Yurok Reservation. Okay. Yeah. Is, and that's, mm-hmm. help me geographically. Humble. Yeah, so we are from about the Witchpeck area up to Klamath, one mile on each side of the Klamath River. Okay. But traditionally, our territory was really right before Trinidad, all the way up. Wow. To Klamath. Right. Um, that's our yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to show. I'm going to show everybody on the map here as he flips to me. <laughs> that's right up in this area, <laughs> in Humboldt. <laughs> so. I got it pretty close. It's, yes. It's kind of northern Humboldt. It is. So, yeah, yeah no, it's a pleasure to have you. So uh, where, where'd where you go to school and mm-hmm. how did you get to where you're at? Yeah, I graduated from Hoopa High. I went to CR in Humboldt State. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started in the beer business on my 21st birthday. Of course. My father was a pile driver and he built two of the Anheuser-Busch breweries. Wow. And Funny, crazy story. He saved beer cans um, when he married my mom. Uh, back then, it was okay to buy people beer after work. Sure. And he saved it. And he said, one day I'm going to have a child, and it's going to be the college fund. So I had um, about $40,000 in beer can money uh. that went to college. And I met a local distributor. Huh. Um and he said, you should come in the beer business. You seem like you wow. have the right personality. And I started there and I worked my way up. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked for Anheuser-Busch. I worked for some distributors. And then I also was a VP of Eel River oh, wow. uh, for a while. Didn't and, know that. Yeah. And came home um, for the tribe. And we had the opportunity to purchase Mad River. And right there I am. You're off to the races. Off to the races. So you guys have done a rebranding. We're going to get, we're all going to get mm-hmm. to all of that. But mm-hmm. um fundamentally what changed when you took over say the first year what was the um what were the first initial changes that you guys needed wanted to make what we wanted to do and what happened changed because covid covid hit two months after we purchased the brewery right i remember now uh so what we originally wanted to do is really focus on intertribal commerce and have our beer throughout California at these casinos. Casinos mm-hmm. are one of the largest sellers of beer in California. Mm-hmm. However, nobody's making it and it seemed like a miss. And tourists come often to those casinos to be part of to learn about natives even though to us that seems crazy to go there, but sure. it's a reality and we thought what a better way to storytell and also have our product in there. Mm-hmm. Um, however, that stopped. Indian country is one of the first to shut down and be protective of COVID. Thank goodness to protect right. our elders and our mm-hmm. language and our families. Uh, so then we turned our focus to really rebranding. Mm. Mad River beer has always been wonderful and great. Um, we really wanted to make sure that the products encompassed um, a taste of who we are and what we're mm-hmm. fighting for. As opposed to putting culture on cans, which is highly inappropriate, we really chose to go the route of um, hmm. big things we're fighting for, water, um, land back, mm-hmm. uh, and have a can that's updated and telling the story and really take the Mad River portfolio and make sure that it's the right fit for the times. Mm-hmm. Um, we also continue to make sure that we try to stay as green as possible. We have green waste awards, but then move some of our packaging over to greener, mm. um, the more sustainable uh, practices. Um, on top of that, really focusing on certain areas of California to grow the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tap room really evolved because of COVID. Mm. Uh, 
what I think what we initially started thinking completely changed because COVID. Right. Yeah, but really, and then also um, on our can, we have our own certification. It's something that I'm really proud of. It's your country certification and really being able to have a product in these large stores like Costco and Target that people wouldn't normally hear about your mm. or natives and mm-hmm. be able to have a piece of that story there. Nice. Yeah. Story through beer. Yes. I love it. So back to you for a minute. So who are mm-hmm. you at 15 years old? Oh my gosh. I was at the river every day. I lived in Winchpeck. There was Fun. no internet, no <clears throat> phones. Imagine that. It was amazing. Right. Every day. <laughs> now I look back and feel like I could take it for granted. Um, I went fishing with my dad. I went hunting. I hauled gravel, cut firewood, went to school. I didn't really have the opportunity to get in a lot of trouble because right. there was not a lot. Sounds like your dad was is or was amazing. Amazing. He was. Yes. I did a lot of art beating. Mm-hmm. There's just not much to do. Sure. But what we did have to do were all the right core value things. I just didn't know it at the time. That's cool. Are you able to do that with your kids? Yes. And it's so fun. It's hard to pull away my daughter from some of those modern day things. Right. Oh, the phone? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> or the TV. Oh, or- yeah. Yeah, all of it. But we're getting better at practicing that. And I think especially the last couple of years, it's become really relevant that we need to focus on the right things and encompass mm. that. Yeah, absolutely. So who? So you were in high school at 50. Who were you at 20? What mm-hmm. were you doing? Oh, my gosh. I was working for the county, going to school, thinking about what am I going to do with the rest of my life. Right. And I wanted to initially be a social worker. Huh. And I went to work at Two Feathers. Mm -hmm. They're in Native American Services. Is that McKinleyville? Yes. Yeah. And I cried every day. It was really sad. I wasn't cut out for it. (laughs) Oh, no. And I wanted to bring all the children home. Um, Right. So I had to start thinking about what am I going to do? Yeah. Beer beer is sort of social work. It's a social, I feel like it's a social activity. It's a product, but really what it is, is it's the beginning of a gathering of whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. Connection. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about that a lot here. Um, that relation connection begets relationships mm-hmm. and vulnerability in the best sense of the word creates intimacy, which is kind of what some of us lack out there. It's like we're all this mm-hmm. these islands running around and we don't know intergenerational community, which yeah. I I did I am I infer from your adventures, mm-hmm. you know, living in Witchpack. Mm-hmm. Um and we you know, we we lack that, which is kind of sad. But so, uh, so you were at Humboldt State, now Cal mm-hmm. Poly. Mm-hmm. I was got to get Cal Poly in here for my. I, I don't know why I'm looking at Nick to mm-hmm. say that. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get it right for Cal Poly because they're always rebranding. Yes. Um, yes. So, who were you at 30? What were you doing? Oh my gosh! At 30, I was working at Yale River. Wow. Okay. And I was the VP working through the rebranding. Mm-hmm. The package you see now was different before that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really into sports. I've always really been into sports, Mm -hmm. anything outdoors and active. And I was really figuring out that even though I didn't want to be in the beer business, I thought I would do something where I was helping people. And I was a little bit upset with myself. I was Mm -hmm. disappointed. I thought, oh, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to do all these good things. And I finally was able to accept that this might be what I do. Mm-hmm. And trying to figure out in the future, what can I do to be comfortable in this? Yeah. And trying to figure out, do I go down more of marketing lane? Do I stick to sales? Mm. What is that that I want to do? So you figured you would be staying at Eel River? No. At the, at that point. So you had a vision for something bigger. Yeah. I just wow. didn't know what it was. I didn't ask what your major was. What did you study? Yeah, your, business. Per, perfect. Mm-hmm. And Humboldt's got a great business yeah, program. Always has. Yeah, yeah. I wish I would have been full on business because it's always interchangeable with everything. Mm-hmm. So where uh, where were you at 30 years? I just asked that. 40. I don't even think you're 40. Oh my so. gosh, no, I am. I'm okay. 42. Okay. <laughs> 40 was the second year of the pandemic. Yeah. And it was hard a little bit with work because everything was shut down. Mm-hmm. And we had to get really creative. And it was also, I feel like, a time where a lot of racial issues came up. Mm. And I wasn't aware that we had those maybe in Humboldt County. Mm -hmm. 
trying to figure out how to be a good mom mm. while I work all the time. Right. That balance, work-life balance. Right. Yeah. And everyone talks about having this time for their selves, mm-hmm. self-care, mm-hmm. trying to figure out how you do that when you have no time. Right. Or not feel guilty for not doing it. What did you do? What did you figure out? What are your secrets? I don't know. To creating if I, more time. I don't know if I have it yet, but I think it's being forgiving on yourself and not punishing myself. Mm. I see everyone having time to exercise and paint and do all these amazing things. Right. And coming to terms with it's okay if I can't do all that in a day. Right. If I can make my daughter happy and my partner maybe a good dinner and have a good day at work and tell the people I love, I love them. That can be enough. That's good. I like it. Especially I think during COVID where maybe everybody had this leisure yeah. and here you are grinding to try to figure out yeah. how to make this enterprise grow during no grow time. No grow. Yeah. And social media doesn't help. I was watching all these people have all this time for things and saying, I'm so bored and I was just slammed. It was right. go, go, go. We were trying to figure out every day at that time, the laws were changing for the tap room. And oh, in right. Blue Lake, we didn't, we were the only food being served. Wow. And so I, when we shut down initially because we had to, really the community reached out and said, you have to open, there's nowhere else to go. Hmm. And having to figure that out and right. not pay attention to everyone else who's getting to be on vacation, it felt like at the time. Right. And you had the whole outdoor space that you could work right. with. Right, right. Yeah, and I remember going out. I um, So Load Slow, is, he, is mm-hmm. that the still the yes. server? Mm-hmm. Are they yes. you or are they someone? Is that a No, so provider? yeah, Bill was doing food in Blue Lake and his barbecue is amazing. Mm. Um, he was in the back of the roller rink at Blue Lake of his little smoker. Perigo Park. Yes. <laughs> and he wasn't open enough hours because he didn't have an actual facility. And as opposed to spending my time worried about food, I felt like we need to just focus on beer. That's what we're there for. We're mm-hmm. not there for food. And so we chatted and really came up with the idea, you should be doing this in our kitchen so I can focus on beer. And then you grow your business. This food's amazing and people need to try it. And it's a better platform. Oh, big time. And it worked out better. And why wouldn't we help each other, especially in times like this? Mm -hmm. It's really expensive right now for businesses to go open up a new facility. Why not help each other? Yeah, I love it. So yeah. you guys got to expand out then to, uh, besides serving beer at mm-hmm. San Francisco Giants baseball, mm-hmm. which is amazing. And I want to hear mm-hmm. that story in a minute. But you guys, uh, you're doing the thing in Willow Creek at the golf course? Yes, we're still... working on it. Yeah, they're fixing up the building, so more to come on that. But we hope to be there soon and really provide that same platform to those people <clears throat> in Willow Creek of having delicious food. There's not a lot of places to mm-hmm. eat, having a safe place to go. Um, to just enjoy the day. The golf course is beautiful and mm-hmm. reviving that. The tribe mm-hmm. is doing such a great job on the golf course itself. Wow. and Because it was shut yeah, for a while, right? For a while, yes. Wow. So will that be, um, so it'll be a, a tap room. Will you manufacture there as well? No, it'll just, well, for right now, it'll just be a tap room. Mm-hmm. With a golf course? With a golf course, yes. That's a big dream for a lot of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Destination place. So fun. And it's also focusing on tourism, too. Mm -hmm. Um, Nick and I were just talking about in this hard time economically, really pushing tourism. And Mm. I feel like we have left that in the past during the Mm -hmm. pandemic. And all of our businesses in Humboldt rely on tourism. It's so important. And what can we do to get better to help push Mm -hmm. that and get together and spread the word that it's beautiful here? Yeah. Amen. And I I see... um, and I hear that cannabis is caving in everywhere. It's like mm-hmm. I just talked to somebody we know, and it's he said Garberville and Redway are just like, it's just terrible. So it's hard. like it's it's caved, and it's so yeah. Back to tourism. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't we? Mm-hmm. It's and there's a lot of people that want to come and or come back. Yep. So when Joni and I are up hiking in Trinidad or mm-hmm. Sumeg or wherever we're at, it's inevitable. There's like people from around the world, mm-hmm. and they're like going. Oh, oh, they're looking at the ocean they've yeah. never seen in the Pacific. Right. Or a redwood tree. They're just tripping on a big tree. Mm-hmm. And it's like, 
oh, all this stuff we take for granted that we yeah. see every day. We're one of the most traveled destinations in the world with the Redwoods. We right. forget because it's our home that we're one of the only places with these beautiful trees. And we're one of the top destinations in the world. Mm -hmm. And we need to capitalize off of it. And the Great Redwood Trail is coming. So we're yes. going to see that those tourists it's come in, hiker, mm -hmm. biker, whatever. Mm -hmm. They're going to move on a trail, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. It will be. Yeah. Oh, and you guys are going to get the, uh, the Annie, Annie Mary, Mary Trail. The trail, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. When does that happen? Uh, soon. In fact, one of our um, brew house guys are a big part of that. Him and his wife do so much work. And I'm wow. so thankful. They're just a big part of not just a bike community, but sharing our natural resources and beauty here. Um, I think it's a couple years out, I believe. I'm not 100% yeah. sure. So let's talk about the Annie Mary rail line came from... Mm -hmm. Eureka to Arcata and came out to Blue Lake mm -hmm. for logging purposes back in the day. Mm -hmm. And Annie and Mary, tell you know that story much? You probably I do not. I think they worked for the city of Blue Lake. They they were a couple of, I don't know, office manager, official ladies. So they named the Annie Mary Days, which you mm -hmm. guys just celebrated. Mm -hmm. And uh, the trail got named that. But we, Joni and I lived right off that before. Well, I lived on it before we were married. We didn't live together before mm -hmm. we were married. So I want to just clear Sorry, Joni. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's gorgeous. It, co it goes through some really so cool pretty. places. Yeah. And that's going to connect with Humboldt Bay, which is going to connect mm -hmm. with, I don't know, San Francisco. Yeah, it's gonna inevitably. It's going to be all the way. Yeah. And I believe we're at the end of the trail. Yeah. But, wow. And there's beer. At the, <laughs> at the it's end like of a the pot rainbow. of gold. It's a pot of gold. <laughs> and it literally is a, a case of gold. <laughs> I love it. That's, that's great. So tell me about uh, a little bit about your victories marketing mm -hmm. in terms of how did the giant steal happen? What's mm -hmm. going on with hockey? What's happening mm -hmm. with the other, um, the other casinos in, in the mm -hmm. state and out of state too? Yeah, not yet, but soon to come. Um, we, during the pandemic really were starting to get concerned that we weren't be able to get the word out that we purchased Mad River and mm -hmm. we had a rebranding due to everything being closed and so I had this crazy idea of, hey, let's reach out to the San Francisco Giants. They really have led all sports in right. inclusion right. and diversity. They have a lot of firsts. Um, and <laughs> we Googled every single person that worked there and emailed every single person. Wow. And came up with a short little snippet and they responded. And it was at a time where we thought we're just never going to get the word out. COVID's never ending. It almost seemed that there was no light at the end of the tunnel. And then the big win. Yeah. And we wow. spoke and I was really honest with them about what we need as a tribe and how we were struggling. And mm -hmm. I felt like we needed to tell our own story. I was over being tokenized by all these other, not just schools, but teams and businesses. And mm -hmm. we should be able to be our own voice. Yeah. And it took off from there, really. Wow. Yeah, they've been nothing but wonderful and truly walk the line that they speak, which is not common, I feel. Which is cool. I yeah. love it. So yeah. they, um, do they serve, I w would imagine, not all your beers, but do they serve Yeah, we have mostly? quite a few. We have Historic State Park, Steelhead. We have Undam Seltzer, and then we have our new beer, Maze Goddess, there. Wow. Yeah. So that's really great. And really is, it, is. is it in different places through the park? It is. It's in right now nine different locations and wow. you can order some on the app depending on the seat that you're in. Wow. Yeah, it's really great. And then also them giving us a platform and offering to help where they can. It's yeah. pretty amazing. That's really cool. The reach is far. And then we started with um, the Hockey League Barracudas in <clears throat> San Jose mm -hmm. where we have our own, our own bar really. It's all Mad River beer with oh. our um, design on it and marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the largest bar that's overlooking the hockey stadium and having that opportunity to hit those people that we would have missed, right. um, especially during that time. Right. Just being yeah. in something semi-pro even sports is cool. Amazing. And being yeah. able to have our own design and words there and not have a mascot that doesn't represent us. It's really refreshing and almost mm -hmm. unbelievable that that's happening. Nice. My friend yeah. Scott Seeley from Porter Street Barbecue tells me mm -hmm. that live hockey's 
the best sport it's ever. So amazing. It's like it's it's like that's the game to go to. Way better than football or anything. My daughter, our baseball is our sport, and I took her to a hockey game, and she said, "This is just the best thing Super ever. Cool. It's just action, twenty four seven. Yeah. Oh, it does it so stop. fun. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see the puck versus mm-hmm. TV. It's tougher, especially mm-hmm. for older people like me. Um, so tell me more about how you got into some of the other venues mm-hmm. that you're at. Yeah, we're really focusing on intertribal commerce um, and looking to make that connection. We're opening up Southern California. We're working hard on that right mm-hmm. now um, and coming out with products. Maze Goddess is one of those products that we really had to push the boundaries on. I had to create our own style of beer, indigenous mm-hmm. ale, mm-hmm. Um, and work with other another tribe to grow the corn in that beer specifically mm-hmm. to sell in these large venues. Um, we looked at something like a Modelo and realized that a Mexican lager is super tokenizing and how can we be honest about what we're doing. So we have the Iowa tribe of uh, Nebraska, Kansas growing corn that we put in there and it is a 4.3% uh, wow. beer, but we literally had to create our own style of beer, which is indigenous ale. Oh, do you mean this? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I love the branding. It looks thank beautiful. You. Thank it's you. It's only 4.3, so it's it kind of lawnmower beer. You can yes. go outside. Mm-hmm. And, and also nice. larger venues such as stadiums, casinos, bigger things, they're looking for the lower alcohol content. Right. So we not only have to make something that we think is good, but something mm-hmm. that sells and fits. So right. now that we have this and really focusing on that, opening that opportunity of other venues, especially mm-hmm. in Southern California and Central California, um, and really pushing that. And there'll probably be more news in the future on that. Well, you know something we don't. Yeah. Oh, tell us more. Um, so you get some of the ingredients from other other tribes? Yeah, yeah. So we started with that one. We They are growing the corn. It is a rare corn from an Aztec village. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's pretty cool how we got maize goddess. Is It is a, the Aztec believe that, it, I won't pronounce her name, I'll botch it, um, that she created life from corn dough. Mm. And so they grow ironically, this corn from this Aztec village are the only ones in America that are allowed to grow it. Wow. And so our idea was is to start with this and come up with ingredients from all different kinds of tribes that we can use and then maybe even start a trend of, hey, other tribal businesses, we can all use each other. Right. We all have something to offer. Right. So where's it grown? Nebraska? Um, Iowa. 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 Yeah. They call it Iowa. I'm from yeah. Iowa. Oh, my gosh. Sioux City, Iowa. Nice. Yeah, all the families back there. Most of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, what's cool about the Midwest, shout out to the Midwest, is that people are really the real deal. Mm-hmm. You can get some real BSers and some FACO, mm-hmm. whatever, Californians. Not necessarily Humboldt. Humboldt's exceptional. Mm-hmm. But right back there when my mom died and I went mm-hmm. back, people were real. I mean, they didn't. Yeah. Hey, I knew your mom 50 years ago, but I wanted to come out and say hi. And I was oh. just so touched by that. Really, really amazing. So you, you've done a lot in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. So exciting new developments. Let's talk about a little mm-hmm. bit about future without mm-hmm. giving away the yeah the secrets. Yeah. Um. Uh, so it sounds like some new distribution mm-hmm. line. What would they call them? Lines? Or are they called? Yeah, distribution lines. Yeah, yeah just new distribution territories and areas. Mm-hmm. I think also in the future it would be lovely to have a satellite brewery um, mm. in another area. The cost of shipping is really high. Sure. Uh, I hate to pass that cost on to our customers and also to be able to provide more jobs, mm-hmm. um, more partnerships with tribes on a larger level. Mm-hmm. Um, I would hopefully open up the state of Nevada in the near future. Mm. Um there's a lot of opportunity right now. And I really would, for our products going forward, really have more with not just local ingredients, but specifically indigenous. Mm-hmm. We are really lucky to have the Iowa tribe that do regenerative growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and look how to be greener. We're always looking at ways that are affordable. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it's also expensive to be green. It's, yeah, absolutely. Um, and really focus on that. 
and not stop the fight of what we're pushing for, bringing awareness to some of these causes and being seen and being heard Mm -hmm. from ourselves. Uh, I think that's just necessary. And now that we have a lot of that under our belt, really able to push forward and focus on sales and growth now. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So the Klamath Dam is part of that, one of those causes? Yes. Take down the dam? Not Undammed, yeah. Undammed. When is that happening? Yeah, so we have one dam down, um, and I believe each one will come with a short announcement. There has to be all different types of thing that's correct, and I'm mm-hmm. not going to pretend I know all the details and mm-hmm. speak for them. It's ever-changing. So it's a phased yes. kind of a... Mm-hmm. There's four dams. Deconstruction. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I never thought in my whole entire life that this would happen. It's... Oh. Because that's probably not far from where you were raised, right? No, it's not far at all. In fact, when we had the large salmon um, kill, that was my front yard was the Klamath River. and I remember that. Everything, fish everywhere, dead fish. We thought it was the world ending at the time. We woke up and it was just the river was just covered in silver carcasses. And you felt like, what the heck is going on? What is happening? And even now, up until last year and the year before, there's times where you shouldn't really get in the water. You might get a weird rash and all these animals are dying. And it's not just the salmon. There's a large effect of things dying because we're not giving it water. Right. Right. I wanted to talk about cannabis growers tapping straws into the water, but Mm -hmm. I'm resisting that right now. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. uh, Good on me. Um, Mm -hmm. I was looking at the art. So is the Mm -hmm. artwork, is it all the work of the same team? Because some of these, the Undammed and, you know, Mm -hmm. um, so I want to confess that I have my own beer that I, you, you guys make. Mm -hmm. Um, I was behind. Can I tell my beer story? Yes. It's a great story. Yeah. So I'm behind in line waiting and it's a hot day and it's, there's some music. I don't know. It was a couple Mm -hmm. years ago before COVID. And uh, there's Rick from Cadillac Ranch who plays mm-hmm. frequently. Mm-hmm. And he, he comes away with this beer. I go, what are you drinking, man? He goes, it's an old school. And I go, what? <laughs> he goes, they mix two beers. I go, wait a minute, mm-hmm. you can't do that. He goes, well, they do. And it's a double IPA and Jamaican red, mm-hmm. which Jamaican red's called something else now, or is it still? No, a- double IPA is. Okay. Mm-hmm. But Jamaican red's still Jamaican yes. red. And I go, well, he goes, here, mm-hmm. try it. And I, it was amazing. It was like, oh my gosh, this is so refreshing and good. Mm-hmm. I'll have one of those. So I've had, now I've had two of those. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, it's just a really amazing, and they were really, hey, yeah, we know what an old school will mm-hmm. make you that. So uh, how about significant challenges along the way? Oh. I mean, I, I've, yeah. I've, you've implied a couple, but mm-hmm. I'd like, what, who, who were they? <laughs> yeah. It's not been an easy road and we can, I can sit and talk about all the wonderful, lovely things. And there's so many, Sure. but buying a business that was so historic, Mm. but had its own struggles and having to change that right? and still maintain that fan base is difficult, especially during COVID. Right. To undo what, yeah. Mm -hmm. And businesses evolve and change and it's hard to keep up with that. It's expensive to keep up with that. It's sure. really expensive for a brewery to make any changes. Mm-hmm. Um, when you make a change on packaging, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars mm-hmm. uh, when you change anything. So just being real about the cost of things in a time where we couldn't sell beer mm-hmm. and you think originally the story is so amazing. It's going to sell itself but still having the realization of getting into some of these large chain stores. Right. It's not enough. How do you get Costco everywhere? Yeah. And yeah. we've had some big wins with Costco. Mm-hmm. We're really thankful to have some really good buyers out there. And I think we're getting better at telling our story in a short term where people want to buy into it, but it's still hard. Mm-hmm. It's very hard. Um, we made quite a few changes and not everyone liked them and trying to find that balance. It's been difficult. And as a tribal business, I didn't really realize that there's hurdles in that alone. Mm -hmm. Um, I think everyone wants to wave the flag of being inclusive and diverse, but Mm -hmm. when it comes to actions, there's not really any um, that anyone's putting out there, which is fine. But finding that happy medium ground of 
when do you smile and just accept it? But when do you speak up and say, no, this isn't okay? Right. We need a change. Right. And you're a person that does that. Yeah. Yeah. And some may hate me for that, but okay. I, I have a daughter that looks at me every day and I don't think that I could live my life if I didn't fight to make it better. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel like you got that strength? Oh, my dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I might yeah. cry. Yeah. Yeah. He was such a fighter. I think just the story of indigenous people. My grandmother was in a boarding school in Chamawa, Oregon, mm. um, and had a horrible life. And my dad definitely didn't have an easy life and being able to survive and be mm. successful and just survive alone during that time for yeah. native Americans. That's such a feat and you become strong and standing up for what you're proud of, whether people like it or not. Right. It's awesome. Good word. Um, how about turning points? Uh, besides yeah. the Giants mm -hmm. contract, um, mm -hmm. big turning points in, in the, the business. Oh, yeah. I mentioned now it's like we're getting back to normal and people yes. are, it's getting warmer in Blue Lake. We talked about that yeah. before the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. People are starting to drink beer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Turning points really when we started there's been a new one recently. We redid Slam and Salmon. Um, not only did we relabel but label it, but we refreshed on the recipe. This is a double IPA. Mm -hmm. hmm. We freshened it where it is still that same taste, but it's lighter and fresher. Hmm. Um, and doing that to a couple of our beers along with rebranding and getting people excited again about Mad River. Mm -hmm. And even though Steelhead's wonderful, having everyone outside Humboldt see that we have more than just Steelhead. Sure. And in the last six months, we've really had that success and getting it out there mm -hmm. um, has been a really big turning point. Uh, Slam and Salmon is now Canyon of Dreams. Mm. And that story is about our partnership with state parks mm. um, mm -hmm. and being a dreamer we've really had a lot of success with that and it's really taking off. Mm -hmm. And now we are having chain stores and distributors really respond to it. Mm. Now that the proof is in the pudding, mm -hmm. um, outside of the giants. And then also having our local people really rally behind us mm -hmm. and be okay with the change of it being a tribal brewery. It was mm -hmm. hard at first. Mm. Um, somehow there's still that stigma of natives and alcohol. Mm. Um, and I think we're finally at a point where everyone settled down and accepted it and more supportive. We're so progressive at Humboldt County. How could this be? I know. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Huh? Yeah. yeah. We, it's funny how we <laughs> get it out on a, a soapbox, how we talk a talk and then we need to walk the walk. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, reading the comments and some of the stuff locally is really sometimes pretty brutal in loco or wherever. It's really like, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, so Slam and Salmon is now Canyon mm -hmm. of Dreams, mm -hmm. and um, Steelhead is still Steelhead. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. for, for so people that that don't know, that's yeah. that's your standard. It's a lager. Yes, it's an extra pale ale. Extra pale. Yep. Um, and it's won numerous awards. It's it's the flagship. It's the flagship. Uh, we did purchase new equipment when we purchased the brewery that helped. I think the beer just be a little more clear and clarified. Mm -hmm. But it's still the same recipe and really try to encompass what they did right with Steelhead into mm -hmm. the other products. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other products were wonderful. They just didn't get the time and the highlight that they needed. Right. right. So do you, let's say all dreams come true and mm -hmm. you're at Costco and mm -hmm. you're, you're in every place in Nevada or mm -hmm. wherever. You guys have capacity. Can, can, can you make that much beer? We have more capacity currently than what we use. However, we will need to grow with that. There's land where you're at by... Correct, yeah. By Alm Almquist. Is he, does Correct. Alm Eric Almquist own that stuff? Yes, yeah. He's a, he's, I Wonderful. would imagine he'd be a great landlord. Yeah, I think we need to really focus on another area outside of just Humboldt. Mm -hmm. Behind the Redwood Curtain, it's so expensive. The ship. Yeah. And ship in and ship out. Yes, Keep Mad River, the one we have in Blue Lake here, but then think about another area. I would really like to do it with another tribe. Mm. 
um, on tribal land and have wow. that jobs and stay true to our story. Mm-hmm. So hopefully and Evelyn, we can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also working with another tribe right now to maybe make their beer for them. Mm. Um, it would be nice to be able to do that down the road. Wow. So capacity would mean more equipment locally, Correct. but also a second. A second location. Yeah. Or a third. Who knows? Yeah. And maybe even with a new location, be able to be more green. I would love to go to solar. Mm -hmm. Um, We have zero waste, Mm -hmm. but maybe there's more we can do with that than what we're doing right Right. now. Right. So for us, solar today is 62 degrees. (laughs) Sun just came out at Mm -hmm. like three o'clock in Mm -hmm. Eureka. Mm -hmm. And uh, Death Valley is 116 today. It's unbelievable. So it's that's twice what we are. Mm -hmm. Weird. Mm -hmm. And Reading is not too far behind. No. Yeah. It's crazy. So, it um, good for solar, good for beer drinking. Mm-hmm. But when you're in humble, <laughs> yeah, but well, living definitely. here is, is, is also the magic. So, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. let's talk about, about your view of Humboldt County for a minute. Mm-hmm. So I always do a, a special section. Mm-hmm. It, it requires the bell. Okay. Okay. Hey, Linda. Going to get a sense of what you like in Humboldt mm-hmm. and there's no correct answer. If you answer correctly, um, you'll get. A small prize. Okay. So uh, there's no correct. Uh, so when you guys go out, where do you guys go to eat? And I realize that you're you're kind of in business, so you got to be mm-hmm. judicious. So you can't choose everybody. But where would mm-hmm. you if if I said, hey, here's five hundred bucks, take the family out. Larapins. Larapin. Okay. Yeah, we're just there. It's it's the guy. The guy's talking the way to stop. He goes, yeah, guy just compared us to French Laundry in Nap or in mm-hmm. Calistoga. He mm-hmm. goes, it, he thinks we're every bit as good. And I go, wow. Met a guy in Boise, our daughters, he goes, and he's very affluent in travels. He goes, yeah, that, that Larap, Larapin, is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. I go, yeah, you got it. He goes, he goes that was amazing. Amazing. Um, so if you didn't drink one of your beers, mm-hmm. what beer would you Ooh, have? I do love Eel River. I don't think it's out of just loyalty. Mm-hmm. Their IPA is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest IPA person. The English mm-hmm. style IPA, they just nail it every single time. Nice. I love it. And their blonde is really good. Uh, yeah, I'm not a blonde drinker, but it's good. Yeah. Everything they do is really good. And their food seems to be good. Oh, their food is delicious. And the tap room there is fun and Fortuna, mm-hmm. and it's always lively and happy. And I love how they were the first certified organic brewery. Right. And that was difficult. It's expensive mm-hmm. to be that. I bet. Yeah. We have a lot of good beer here, but they just have a special place. So you're going to go for a hike with the family. Where do you go? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, there's so many different places. Of course, I love Strawberry Rock, but. Oh, yeah. You actually get up all, do you? I do. Go all the way up. All the way up. Rad. Good for you. Yeah. I don't know. I think I like going up Bald Hills Road, maybe because it takes me back to my childhood. It's so beautiful up there. It's right. where our people lived. It's where I learned to hunt. It's where I learned to drive. It has a lot of my childhood memories there. Joni just took me for a hike, a drive and a hike up there, all the way to the where the ranger, the tower is. Yeah, is yeah. That Lions Valley? Yeah, the Lions Ranch. Lions Old Ranch. Lions Ranch, yep. It was mm-hmm. just amazing. So beautiful. Yeah, we hiked in. It was really fun. It was it, like there's no one there. No one. It's so beautiful. And you're, I feel like you're on top of the world. Yeah, and there's this nice breeze, and mm-hmm. then it turned 95, and we had to go home because <laughs> it was too hot. <laughs> we were we were starting to melt a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, how about coffee? Where do you drink coffee? Oh, I love Gold Rush. Okay, great. Yeah, I actually met the owner. He's I don't think he maybe he owns it still. I don't think so. Nice guy. They've always had just consistently good coffee. Yeah. They don't overdo it. I'm not into all of the sweet craziness that mm-hmm. everyone does. Mm-hmm. And they have just good coffee. I mm-hmm. don't need the fancy stuff. I like right. coffee. Right. We always go to Black Rock up in Medford. They have this Ooh. killer coffee. Really? I mean, there's Dutch Bros on every corner. And mm-hmm. shout out to Dutch Bros. But these guys are uh, really do coffee mm-hmm. really well. Um, so talking about Humboldt and the future of it, um, what do you see for the future uh, five, 10 year window for, for y'all, but for our kids, for the county? What, what do you want to see? What do you see? I want to see longer term vision planning and economics. Hmm. 
I look at what we've had with logging and fishing mm-hmm. and marijuana just in my lifetime. Right. That was never sustainable. Yeah. We jump in, like, we repeat the gold rush over and over, I feel like. I feel like we're stuck in Groundhog Day. Right. And I don't know why we're still hanging on to that business. We're mm-hmm. still trying to hang on to it. I hope that we look long term and figure something out that's good for our community that's mm-hmm. sustainable. Good. Um, I want to live here for the rest of my life. It's the most magical place. Mm-hmm. And I can't see my daughter leaving too far away. This mm-hmm. is where our people have been forever. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that we can have a more sustainable future and have more honest conversations about that. I also hope that we do start to focus on tourism and really mm. remember why we live here. Yeah. It's easy to get stuck in the negativity and we're trying about that. Right. Really focus on how wonderful it is and get back to that. Mm-hmm. And even though I don't think it had happened when I was growing up, going to the Arcada Plaza and having all these fun events mm-hmm. and seeing everyone. Right, right. And when I moved away, I missed it so much of having these community mm. things and being together and being happy mm-hmm. and supporting each other. Farmers markets, whatever, oh, yeah. It was just, you just wanted to be together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know what we have to do to go back that direction. I feel like this year we've made a lot of lead way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Eureka is doing some stuff. Mm-hmm. The Thursday night concerts, the Friday night yeah. street thing, and yeah, everybody's got yeah. an arts alive. It seems like yeah, even McKinleyville does their concerts in the park, and it's nice. And even if it's a small turnout, it's something. It's something. It's something. Yeah. And of course, I'd love to see more inclusion for um, Native Americans and Humboldt. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I think everyone here knows that we're here, sometimes I feel like there's still a wall there and a mm-hmm. gap. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how we close that, but. I love your answer about something long-term and sustainable. That's a brilliant, brilliant commentary because you're right. We gold rushed it again and there's, we'll probably do it again with something. And it's like um, Nancy Olson from the chamber was here mm-hmm. and she said, you know, and she added a further comment that, Hey, and the, and the clock's running. <laughs> we got to come together and make some good mm-hmm. decisions because mm-hmm. not everybody's going to get everything. Nope. And we're we're a little behind the eight ball in some ways. I mean, I think of what if we had a nice concert venue on the bay mm-hmm. or somewhere else? It's like, mm-hmm. and we could have, you know, uh, Michael Bublé come and right. somebody major, right? Frank Sinatra. Wait, he can't come. No. But you know, somebody, uh, whatever, Pink Floyd, or even like the Brit Festival in mm-hmm. in Jacksonville, Oregon. Mm-hmm. There there could be that venue that could be amazing in a big hotel, and mm-hmm. maybe that's not the necessarily the way to go but um i like that so how do you personally make a difference and and i got a couple of questions before Mm -hmm. we close that i ask everybody so Mm -hmm. be ready for them okay who are you and what do you want that's okay those are the two questions but um how do you personally make a difference in terms of um giving back to the community i think that i'm still trying to figure that out we were talking about that as well i really feel like we need a voice for not just businesses, but each other of what's really going on and how we really feel. Mm -hmm. I feel like we have a lot of great organizations and clubs that have the right intentions. I don't know if they're as efficient as they used to be. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful the work the chambers do and the cities. I don't know if everyone's going to those meetings Mm -hmm. and I would One day I'm trying to figure it out to have a platform for all of us to come together and be honest about, I am struggling. I have nothing. This is what I need help with Mm -hmm. and have other people to be able to not just support and listen, but all of us have resources Mm -hmm. and ideas Wow! and pull it together and just be there for each other. It's been a hard road and I don't think that hard road's over with the economy and everything that's going Mm -hmm. on in the world. Um, and I think too, just surviving and not giving up, mm-hmm. keep fighting. Yeah. And create a venue for that connection right. point. And a safe place. Like 
Yeah, I don't know what that looks like, but it's been on my mind Mm -hmm. for the last three and a half years. And Mm -hmm. I would really like to have a space, whether you're a business owner or employee somewhere, to come Mm -hmm. together and be there and work better together. We have to work together in Humboldt. We all have some sort of struggle one way or the other. Right. And be more honest about it. We see all these beautiful pictures on social media, but life is not always that beautiful. No, no. Um, Having an office in downtown Eureka, I can... I can confirm that Ooh, for sure. Yeah. So, um, your legacy. What do you? What's gonna? What's the phrase on your tombstone? Oh no! Oh my gosh! I think I'm still figuring it out. Maybe she tried. She tried. <laughs> <laughs> brief, brief and to the point. I like. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. So, um, so I'll I'll come back to the original question because mm-hmm. you did really well with it. I barely asked it. So who who is Linda Cooley? I think that she has so many tasks she wants to do Mm -hmm. and tries to do them all, Ah. but inevitably finds a couple that she does well. Mm. And I think she's someone that strives for all the good things and trying to figure out how to put it in a package and maybe learning a lot on the way. Nice. Good answer. Wow. Just being real. I'm not That's sure. Totally real. I'm not sure how it's going to pan out, but yeah, we'll see. We're all on that journey. Yeah, and and you kind of said what you want. Um, what do you What do you personally want? I mean, and and not to say mm-hmm. my other question was, hey, what do you do to make the community yeah. better? You've only run a giant brewery and t- turned it around mm-hmm. and made it amazing and have this mm-hmm. giant vision for thousands of other people and things, but. Um, in terms of what would you, mm-hmm. what would you want, um, if given unlimited resources mm-hmm. outside of business, you kind of mentioned, hey, a forum mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. What would you like to? What would you want? I think that it's really hard as an indigenous woman, especially when you come from a reservation, to think that you could ever make things happen or that people want to listen to you. Mm-hmm. And it sounds crazy. I know some people right now feel like racism doesn't exist, but to be able to spread the hope that you're capable of anything, Mm -hmm. and I don't know what that would look like, but I know for myself growing up, I just didn't necessarily think that I had the possibility to make changes. Mm -hmm. And some of the successes and changes that I have been able to be a part of, Mm -hmm. not me alone, it's a whole team, whole tribe. Sure. How can we do that on a larger level and be there for each other Mm -hmm. and change that narrative where as opposed to feeling oppressed or suppressed that you, those struggles make you empowered. Yeah. Love it. That's. Sounds like a book to me. (laughs) Right. What not to do by Linda Cooley. That's okay. (laughs) Sometimes the what not to do. Right. The most valuable of all. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks, and for thanks for having the, me. Thanks for the honest, like crazy honesty. Yeah, I'm Appreciate sorry, it. but no, don't be sorry at all. No, and I, I love it. Um, hope you'll come back actually. And so, <sighs> any any questions for me? Anything? Anything else? Um, Did I miss anything? I I do about? have a question for you. Go for it. How do you stay motivated to stay positive and pushing your business all the time? I fangirl uh, over all the things you do, and you're uplifting people. And thank you. It's motivating. I've had a couple of days where I've just kind of been down in the mud and I literally go to your Facebook page. Hey, there he is. He's, he's happy. You just, you're always trying and you're always reaching out mm. and trying to help people. What drives you to do that? Um, thank you. That's a great question. And I, now I'm on the spot and I'll come up with my best, honest, short answer. Uh, I am highly, highly motivated by my higher power, by the creator. And I am Mm -hmm. totally pretty unabashed about that. I don't really shove that much, but it's, but you asked, so I'll I'll say, Mm -hmm. um, I am highly motivated to know that my days on earth are limited. Nobody gets out of here Mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. And I want to be, uh, have something really key on that tombstone. I don't know, you know, what that is exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm motivated because I know that one day this lovely woman I'm married to that's raised nine and child number 10 right here, 
uh, needs needs an amazing honoring retirement. It's going to be mm-hmm. freaking fun. And mm-hmm. so um, I know that in order to do those things and to achieve those things, there's things that go before that. Mm-hmm. A responsible person would want to, I'm told by my coach, you have to have health and you have to have money to do mm-hmm. the things that you'd like to do. And so at 63, I'm going, well, got some of that left, got some health left. So mm-hmm. uh, what do we do to you know, accommodate that vision for, say, travel? Mm-hmm. So we're going to go to Amsterdam in the fall. We have a, a son and a, and a granddaughter soon to be born there. So uh, mm-hmm. why not give yourself permission? Go for it. Hey, I, it's only money. Mm-hmm. So we're figuring that out. So what motivates me? I'd say um, <clears throat> I have an amazing partner. And she's Joni. wonderful. Yeah, she's pretty, pretty amazing. My dad goes, so Joni's really, really amazing. He goes, <laughs> I go, and I got this look. I go, what, what about me? He goes, mm-hmm. you just were smart enough to marry Joni. I go, wow, thanks. Thanks, dad. So, and he was right. So got uh, married up in a big way. So uh, do I do this for God, for Joni, for the kids, for grandkids? Yeah. And I think we need more time with grandkids. Mm-hmm. So we... We had nine kids and no grandkids. We had grand dogs and mm-hmm. grand cats. Mm-hmm. And suddenly there's going to be grand t- kid number 10 here in the fall. So it's like, so what's he, what are these guys up to? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, I get it. <laughs> oh, they're having grandkids. <laughs> Crazy. So Jody's vision and mine is to go and spend time with these guys. Because mm-hmm. some of our grandparents didn't do that, a great job with that. Mm-hmm. Some did were really amazing. Mm-hmm. But back to being remote, it's harder mm-hmm. to get the heck out of Dodge. Mm-hmm. You know, it's expensive to fly. So expensive. It takes all day to drive to Boise. Yeah. Um, but that's what you got to do if you want to make connection and relationship mm-hmm. and all that stuff, that magic happens. So thanks for asking that. Good question. Thanks for doing it. Thanks Thank- for being there for all of us that are Thank you. You're really good at outreaching. And I try sometimes to take a page from your book. We'll yeah. see how successful I, I get you, at you're it. You're more than welcome. Anything I can do to help. Anyway, thanks for coming today. Thank you. For Appreciate having. you, and I wish you a good afternoon, and um, uh, we'll see you in Blue Lake. You will. I know. Thanks.